ladies and gentlemen. Uh, CGF here once again on this wonderful Friday morning, August 25th, 2023. End of the week, lot to talk about. Obviously, yesterday was a big day for the New York Giants as they made a big trade with the Arizona Cardinals, trading their seventh round pick for Isaiah Simmons, a player that has um, a lot of Giants excited. So before we get going, I just want to thank you for your support. Thank you for all listening in. It's, all, it's very appreciated. So where to begin about this Isaiah Simmons trade? It's for the Giants right now, being able to upgrade their linebacking core and adding a player of the athletic caliber as a as Isaiah Simmons for basically a seventh round pick, it, which in the NFL terms is peanuts, is, is quite amazing. Um, back in 2020, when I was... Um, on the big blue view message board, Isaiah Simmons was one of the players that I really liked for the giants. I understand why they didn't go in that direction because they really needed to shore up their offensive line. And um, Andrew Thomas was the top rated offensive tackle on their board. And to this point, Andrew Thomas has worked out really well for the giants, but who would have thought at this point that the giants would both have Isaiah Simmons, who was the eighth pick of that draft, and um, Andrew Thomas, who has turned out to be a premier left tackle. I mean, the Giants, we'll have to see how it turns out. We have to see how he fits in Wink Martindale's scheme. But bringing in Isaiah Simmons to this team that is on the cusp right now of really contending possibly for the NFC, maybe even down the line, if they can contend with the likes of Philadelphia Eagles and the San Francisco 49ers, a team that could perhaps even make it to the Super Bowl. Who would have thought, based on how bad things were the last couple of years, that the Giants were would be able to turn things around this quickly? But here we are. This is a lot of this is conjecture. A lot of this is on paper. You know, looking at the Giants' defense right now, we've already seen this preseason the back end of the defense, um, the additions of Trey Hawkins, Deontay Banks, and um, better play from Dane Belton at, on the back of the defense. The Giants' defense on the back end has looked fabulous. It's looked fantastic. And then now you talk about adding a, a player like Isaiah Simmons, who can be used in so many different ways. I would I would personally not use him as a safety, but he has experience as safety. He's been moved around at the linebacker position inside and outside. I expect Wink to use him uh, as, as a player that can be utilized in many different ways, but mostly as a pass rusher, something that he was um, really good at in college when he played at Clemson. So Giants make this big move. I would have to say for the first time since probably the 1980s, the Giants have some serious talent on, on their at, on the linebacker level of their defense. I mean, you could go back to the 80s with Carl Banks and um, Lawrence Taylor. And it, it, it's just the Giants have up, upgraded to, to to a level that they have not seen in a long time. And, and, you know, I talked about the other day, Antonio Pierce was the last really good linebacker the Giants have. Giants potentially now have two great linebackers to put in the middle of that defense which you really need to have if you think about the Giants um some of the opponents they have on their schedule they have to face George Kittle they got to face um the Philadelphia Eagles twice with Goddard you got to face um perhaps if you make it as far as the Super Bowl you're gonna have to face a Travis Kelsey I mean the Giants right now one of the things they've struggled with in the last couple of years is probably as long as I can remember is is guarding tight ends and now they have the athleticism in the middle of the defense to actually keep up with athletic tight ends. And something that really excites me is that the Giants right now, I think they could have a top five defense. And that is, you know, that's not asking for too much based on what the moves they made this offseason. So Giants are not done. Obviously, they have a um, their final preseason game on Saturday night against the New York Jets. I would suggest if I'm the coaching staff, regardless of what all the outside noises about playing Daniel Jones and playing the starters, don't play the starters. It's too risky for me. I would, if I'm a giants coach, I am resting my starters. I know what I have there. There's no, nothing more they need to prove in the preseason. This game should be for the backups and the guys who are on the roster. Bubble. Something I do want to see is I do want to see Tommy DeVito start the game. I, I don't know if they're going to do that. I don't know if the Giants are going to start DeVito, but I want to see DeVito against some real talent because right now I feel like he's on the roster bubble. He's a player that at the beginning of training camp, you felt that he would be someone who would be quite, frankly, a long shot to, shot to make the roster. Now you think 
if he shows against some ones and twos that he has the ability to um, perform, he's the type of player you're going to want to see perhaps as a backup or maybe even a third string quarterback for the Giants. So um, it's also risky. You think about it. If you put Dominic DeVito on the practice squad, he could easily get poached. So we'll, we'll see how much the Giants um, value him specifically as a backup to Daniel Jones going into the future. Cause quite honestly, Tyrod Taylor has not shown that much to me since he's been with the Giants. He has not been very impressive. Um, you kind of want to nurture a young backup quarterback, someone who could come in and play if need be, if Daniel Jones misses some time. That's something the coaching staff has to dis discern on them by themselves. But I'd like to see Tommy DeVito get a lot of play against the Jets on Saturday night. Also, you talk about special teams, guys like Bryce Ford Whedon, um, Carter Coughlin. Um, does Gary Brightwell get some time? Is he going to be healthy enough to play? The bottom part of the defense where those spots, those last six, seven spots where you got basically guys who are going to be special team aces. That's a very important um, phase of the game that you need to make sure that short up. I mean, we remember the first preseason game, how bad it was, our, our special teams was. So let's hope the Giants could discern and figure out what special team players need to make this team. So next week, we'll know more about the roster. And also, there could be some more moves. Something I did talk about is that I do believe the New York Giants will make some more moves, specifically in the interior of the offensive line. As of press time right now, about 10 a.m. Eastern, I haven't seen any, the Giants make any moves in regards to the offensive line, but I would imagine, and I was taking a look last night, trying to figure out what players they could target if there's a trade target or even free agency. The Giants need to make a move, bring in a veteran or someone who's being undervalued to come in and, and contribute in the center in the center of that offensive line. I mean, Ben Bredesen has looked good. Mark Lewinsky, if you want to base PFF, you know, some people like PFF, some people hate PFF. Based on his PFF rating, he has like a 60-something high 60 rating, 18th to 20th tack, um, a guard in the league, something you, as a Giants fan, you kind of want to feel like you have a little more depth in the interior of the offensive line because you know one injury happens and everything falls apart. And that's one thing the Giants have struggled with over the past couple of years, at least the last five to 10 years, is offensive line play. So you want to make sure that Daniel Jones is protected. So... We'll see what happens, but a lot, a lot of things going to be coming up in the next couple of days. Obviously, we have that third game, and then we have roster cuts, and then we get ready for Dallas. So I will be back. As I said, I will be doing a episode on um, the NFL preview episode, which will probably be coming out in the next week or so. And then I will be doing a Giants preview specifically as I will go over every game and I will go over some of the players I think who will emerge and some of the pl players that may have some struggles this season. And then, of course, we will do our Giants um, Cowboys preview as they open up two weeks from Sunday night, a critical game, a game the Giants need to win if they're going to be competitive this year, not just in the NFC East, but in the NFC as a, in general, because as we talked about in that little um, teaser episode I put out the other day, Giants' schedule is brutal. You play the AFC East, you play the NFC West, and you have a lot of tough road games. So the Giants will need to be prepared. I do believe they are one of the best teams in the NFC. And um, I'm very excited to see what direction this team has had. You know, it's Isaiah Simmons trade it was a surprise, but on my mind, I like what Shane's doing. I like he's going out there. When he sees value, he's not making Gettleman like Alex Ogletree trades where he's trading away a lot of draft assets for a washed up player. I think Isaiah Simmons, I think he's 25 years old. I think he has a lot left in him. So hope Wink can bring out the best in him. And I think I hope the giants are prepared because, you know, two weeks from Sunday night, it's going to be a big test and hopefully the giants pass that test. As always, thank you for joining me. This is CGF um, at underscore NFL. She's CGF Sports. Uh, I talk about the Giants. I talk about the New York sports in general. You can find me on YouTube or you can find me here on Twitter. Thank you all for joining me. Hope you're having a great morning and see you next week.